to Mom Talk. Today we're going to be discussing extracurricular activities. Like what kind of things you want our kids in? Do you want them in music class or sports? How do y'all feel about that? I feel that um, our story class... I think... <laughs> it's okay. I knew this was going to happen. Okay. No, I feel actually that's really important with the discipline and teaching your children that um, I have a one and a three-year-old at this point and that's my plan is to hopefully find the balance between you know, teaching them discipline to stick with something to finish it, but obviously I don't want to be that parent who's pressuring them to work to the point that they're miserable, you know, doing something that mommy wanted them to do as opposed to something that they, that doesn't make them that happy. So that's what I hope as a parent. Like I said, I have a one and a three year old and I hope to find that. Are, you, are your kids in sports now or? No, actually my son has, um, was diagnosed with autism last year, so we're working more with the therapy side of that for him right now and my daughter's born so I, I have to put her in I, I agree with you um my youngest stepdaughter she used to go to piano lessons and she complained about <clears throat> going and said well you have to finish this semester we'd finish this semester and then we'd start again and it was okay well we're starting again do you want to make a commitment and be in piano lessons yes mm -hmm. I want to be in piano lessons but it was the same thing, and I, I don't know if it was necessarily, they didn't want to, she didn't want to be in it, and we were forcing her to be in, in it. It was waking up on Saturday morning, instead of waking up a little later, watching TV, it was wake up, go to piano lessons, and start your day at the beginning, and fine by the end of it, yeah. but just getting up was a motivation was itself. A, a battle sometimes. Did you ever feel like it, with that experience, did you ever feel like um, at some point she wouldn't, what didn't want to do it? Like, if what would you do in that scenario? Like, if their child like really seems miserable, what are you going to do or what would have you done at that point? I don't, I don't feel she was truly miserable. One of the things was I was her teacher, so that was okay. difficult there. Like but I know, know. Yes. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Other music classes. Awesome. Um, I think she, um, there was the situation of getting up, being a little grumpy, but she had friends there. It's a, it's not just one-on-one, -on -one, it's a class base. It's a group of people your own age awesome. that you learn music with. And I think she, she did really enjoy it. And she was really good at it. It was just getting up. And at one point it was kind of, I, I felt maybe she needs a different teacher. It's hard to teach someone you go home with. Mm -hmm. right. So I think that was kind of the breaking point. And I wasn't teaching Saturday anymore, so <laughs> I was able to kind of yeah. <laughs> that off. That's awesome. Do you have your kids in sports right now? Um, yeah, my oldest is 11 and she's in ballet. Um, this will be her third year in ballet. She's wanted to do it since she was five, but for one, it's very expensive. And two, I wanted to make sure she really wanted to do it before we put the commitment into the lessons and the uniforms and stuff like that. But she just has always wanted to dance. And so finally when she was, I guess, was, so eight, I guess, when, she, when we put her in, and she loved it and she was a natural at it. She really enjoyed it. But it was two days a week and she started with one class and uh, taking her to that, she just loved it, and she bloomed, and she flourished, and she really enjoyed it. And I loved taking her, and it was fun to go and watch her, and then she'd do a recital at the end of the year. And it was a big time commitment, but it was something she really liked. And so at the end of the year, I asked her, do you want to continue this or not? You know, I gave her the option. And she's like, yes, Mom, I want to do this again. So I put her in again, this time she had to take two classes, you know, so that, but they were on the same nights. That way, it wasn't all my nights in a row. Then her being the oldest, she was the only one in something. Well, this mm -hmm. last year, my second oldest daughter, who's nine, wanted to do kickball. Okay, okay, kickball too. Well, wouldn't you know they're on different days? So <laughs> my oldest is going from Mondays and Wednesdays, and my uh, second oldest is doing Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then their games are on Fridays. So every night of the week, we're doing something. Well, I've got six kids, and so my last four aren't even, you know, playing anything yet, and I'm going. What am I going to do once the rest of them want to get into something? I mean, you've got to have boundaries. You'll yeah. be pulled in all different directions. I'd be driving the whole time. That's not going to work. Well, we thankfully, we tried uh, Brandon kickball all year. It, it's miserable, you know, 
for me, but she she had an okay time. But she, she decided this year she doesn't want to do it again. I was like, yes. <laughs> and I loved going to watch okay, her. You know, I support, I support her. You know, but she just wasn't into it. You know, she yeah. was just sitting there a lot of the time because it was like baseball. You know, they have to wait their turn versus basketball or something where they're all playing all at the same time. Yeah. They're all involved. They're not. They're sitting there waiting. You know, yeah. so she didn't like it as much. But this year, she said she wants to take jazz class. So, oh, cool. so I was like, maybe okay, the same day. maybe I'll be the same, the same day. Place. Exactly. So. <laughs> That's going to be bad. I think that, but of course, my boys are not going to want jazz or ballet, nor would I put them in it. But, you know, I'm thinking, okay, so my boys are coming up after this. They're going to want t ball or f- football or scouts or soccer, you know, <laughs> put them in the same team or something. But, you know, the, where do you draw the line in how many activities do you get involved in or get your kids involved in and make it, you know, but I do agree that they should have only be involved in it if it's something they really enjoy. But I do make them, I made her finish the whole year, you mm-hmm. know, even though she wasn't enjoying so it. So what age, you being mother of six, what age would you recommend to start enforcing that, no, you you know, you made this commitment, eight. mommy and daddy put this much money exactly. into it, so you got to finish it. I say at eight years old, eight, okay. because that's what my daughter was last year, was eight, she just turned nine. You know, she's at the age where she's like, you know, I don't really enjoy this. Whereas when they're littler, they might not enjoy it earlier, but, you know, if they're not enjoying it, you're easier to pull them out versus when they're older, they need to stick with their commitments. Mm-hmm. So I think eight. Yeah, and when they're little, obviously, just one bad little day can yeah. make a well, one. It can make me yeah. have a bad, one <laughs> bad little thing I in my day. I experience that. Like, I don't ever want to do this again. Right. I put yeah, my daughter so. in gymnastics class, well, uh, both of them are, since they started walking. And... Um, there was a time when Desiree did not want to go to gymnastics anymore. They had switched coaches, and I guess her and the coach just weren't a good match together. So I was like, well, I was thinking about pulling her, but I was like, well, let's see if we can try a different class. <clears throat> and once we switched to the other class, she loved it. You know, it was back to the same thing, but I've enjoyed putting them in gymnastics. I love watching them. You know, it's a lot of bonding time, and it, it helps them develop, you know, um, I don't know how to say it their muscles and their coordination. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a great class to take, but... Um, they get their exercise. I think mm-hmm. that's another plus with, you know, with sports, recreation, mm-hmm. or anything. Mm-hmm. Like that. Yeah. My so, daughter did gymnastics. I loved it growing up. I wish I had to continue it, or that my parents would have kept me in it. But I didn't get to. I only got to have, you know, a year. But my uh, second daughter I put into it because she said she wanted to take gymnastics. So I put her into gymnastics, and she liked it for about six months, and then she didn't want to go anymore. I was like, well, sorry, we got to finish the year, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, again, <clears throat> I, she was six at that point, um, but that it wasn't a team activity. That yeah. was just her in gymnastics, so I figured, you know, her, but I still made her finish it. But I realized she was kind of young, but again, it's one of those things with gymnastics, yeah. good to start young, I think, yeah. versus waiting until later. Yeah, so there's they, sports they, are different ages. In the first class, it's more like a play time with the stuff, you right. know? And I think as a parent, it's important for us to remember our kids aren't going to like everything, mm-hmm. so it's we can't get mad at them when they're not wanting to, to participate in something because it's just not their thing. Because they're still trying to figure out what they like and, and you know what they're going to enjoy doing. So, right. I mean, if you have a child that is constantly eh, after the first week, it could be frustrating to buy all the equipment and right. you know. So I think when my girls get to a certain age, like you were saying, mm-hmm. then it'll be more like. Well, you're gonna finish off the season, mm-hmm. and maybe you know you didn't like the first day, like you said, but at least finish it. But I think when they're young, they don't know what they want. <laughs> well, I mean, if there's a commitment issue, also, yeah. you know, being someone who's on the other end, teaching yeah. the extracurricular. Oh. Yeah. If I have a parent that comes to me and says, "I haven't, we're not really sure what's going on. They seem to like it at first. Now they're saying." Oh, I don't want to come to class, and you know, like, well, is everything all right with Miss Cameron? Yeah, that's fine. I love Miss Cameron. They're like, well, why don't you want to go? And just trying to figure that out actually, you know, puts me in a position where maybe I can help the parent figure out. Okay, well, let's let's find a motivation. Is this too easy? Do we need to do something a little more? Um, strengthening of your mind and muscles <laughs> and get you more excited about yeah. coming to class or can I give you some tips about something to do at home to prepare them yeah. to come in and be Maybe, excited about it? 
So and it's usually not practicing that gets someone of, uh, or not being, not feeling like they're as good as someone else on it. And sometimes if they're competitive, that can be a little yeah. blowing and like, ugh, I don't want to, I don't want to go. <laughs> Maybe it's also important, and I, you know, I didn't think about it until you were saying this, but to tell the kid, okay, you're going to try this class out. I want you to understand that you're not going to be like Derek Jeter, baseball player, or some famous piano, piano, you know, like you're not going to start off that way. So you're going to take time to learn, and it's going to take a lot of practice. That way, they don't go in thinking, "I'm going to be this like awesome soccer player," and then they, you know, get discouraged if they can't make the goal in the first. You know what I mean? Maybe that's like where the work ethic comes in. You know, like, yeah. How, how much work you put into something is, is yeah. what you're going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. So is opportunity to teach a lot of things. Oh yeah. <laughs> so is it, my last question would be: Is it acceptable for your child not to be participate in anything? That depends. That depends on what you're doing at home. Like, right. Yeah. If you are going out on walks and gardening and bike riding, um, have like, have our, lots of friends that you can get together with, yeah. so where they build their social skills and, and what kind of friends do yeah. problem solving <laughs> situations, right. so they can build their cognitive skills. Well, I mean, even, the whole child. Even right now with my three and one year old at home, every morning around ten o'clock, I have um, we sit down with those Melissa and Dad puzzles. Mm -hmm. You know, ones yeah. that spell out, and you probably, we always spend about an hour doing that, just specifically all those puzzles, whether the ABC ones or the little ones that you know, I guess little puzzles that go together, the A goes with the apple and the B goes with the ball yeah, or yeah. whatever. We do those, you know, a lot even right now as to help him out with his therapy. But I think that's good for actually in toddler, you know, kind of get that down for you know, preschool prep. I think it's important for kids to be in some, involved in something. And I think even gardening would be an extracurricular activity because they're taking their time and investing it in something besides just I'm just sure. slacking around. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like, away from the TV. Oh, but we're out of time. Thank you all for joining us for Mom Talk, and we'll see you next week.